in Georgina, there was a vacancy. So unbeknownst to me, my <laughs> husband's cousin was a member of the Riding Association, and he, he was on the same um, mm. uh, level of chairs, uh, the mm. row of chairs. So he kind of looked down the road like this yeah. and did a little bit of hand, uh, you know, I don't know it. So he stood up and said, and nominated, and you. nominated me, and then poked his friend, uh, and the friend stood up and <laughs> seconded the nomination, and there I was. Julia Ann Louise Campbell was born in Hamilton and raised in Toronto. She received her Bachelor of Arts degree from the University of Toronto. She taught high school history in Markham and Newmarket for 24 years. An interesting bit of trivia, she taught Bare Naked Ladies drummer Tyler Stewart at Huron Heights Secondary School. Before the 1995 provincial election, Julia decided, in her words, that she was tired of sitting around the kitchen table complaining about politics and decided to get involved. She was elected to the Ontario Legislature in 1995 during the Mike Harris sweep, defeating New Democrat Larry O'Connor in the riding of Durham, York, getting a 61.8% of all votes cast. She was re-elected in 1999, 2003, 2007, 2011, and 2014. Minister, will you do the right thing and eliminate the ongoing uncertainty, anxiety, and the fear of closure of the demonstration and provincial schools in Ontario? Yes or no? I met with Stefan Marinoyu. Since Sunday, he has been on a hunger strike demanding that this government take action on autism. Stefan is out in front of this building because he has an autistic son and he wants his son to receive the treatment he needs. Yesterday, to her credit, the Minister of Children and Youth came out and met with Stefan. Now it is up to her to talk to the Premier and the Minister of Finance and find the money to meet the needs of autistic children like Stefan's. Don Chapman and Jim Chapman are the owners of Lakeview Vegetables. They are here today in the gallery to join us. Uh, they have made many efforts to reduce and conserve power. The nature of this vegetable processing work is both energy intensive and weather dependent. This year, their bill is set to exceed $1 million, oh, wow. up 67% since 2013. This hydro usage hasn't differed yeah. much, but the bill sure has. As 2017 reflects the 100th anniversary in Ontario of women's right to vote, it also holds another milestone in our province for women in government. First elected in June 1995, Julia Monroe, our respected colleague from York Simcoe, now stands as Ontario's longest serving woman member of parliament. Today, she has surpassed 7,944 days as a member of this legislature. So it is only fitting that the former and distinguished history teacher who left her mark on her students so many years ago now leaves her own mark in our parliamentary history books as the longest serving woman MPP in Ontario. We honour and salute you. Congratulations. became well known in our community when she led the successful fight to stop Bob Ray's NDP proposal to locate North America's largest landfill site on the shores of Lake Simcoe. A history teacher, Julia went on to teach the NDP a lesson they would never forget and make some history of her own as she went on to become the MPP for Durham York and joined Mike Harris in painting Ontario blue. In the legislature she has served in many roles including as deputy speaker for the 40th parliament. Having served the residents of York Simcoe for more than 21 years, she has a track record of fighting intrusive big government and working for individual freedom. Her electoral track record of success reflects the affection that York Simcoe residents have for Julia Monroe. 
It's an honour to stand in the House of Commons today and pay tribute to the amazing work that Julia Monroe has done for our community Terrific and for the lady. province of Ontario in her work at Queen's Park. Congratulations, Julia. We take a lot for granted, Speaker, with our parliamentary democracy that we inherited from the people who came before us and fought hard to preserve it. MPP Monroe introduced the same Magna Carta bill three times. With my introduction, this bill has now been debated five times and considered by four different legislative committees. I am so grateful to everyone here for your support to pay the ultimate tribute to Julie Monroe, passing a bill in her honour that meant so much to her. I leave you with a few words from our late colleague. The ideas contained within the Magna Carta evolve over the centuries. It signifies that no one, not even the Crown, is above the law. That is such an important concept. Thank you so much, Speaker. Thank you. Um, when uh, it was referenced about sitting around the kitchen table, and people have asked me, and I've always said, um, that's the part of our democracy, um, is that's your responsibility to be engaged. And that's um, why sitting at the kitchen table uh, won't cut it. But I also, uh, oh, and I, I know that there were a couple of references made by the press, but one that I liked uh, particularly was a local uh, editor of a local paper who interviewed me. And in his, um, in his write-up, he uh, described me as someone who had crawled, uh, climbed out of the crib and crawled to the right. <laughs> so I, I thought that was okay. I didn't mind that at all. On the frame of my uh, license plate, it says, democracy, don't waste it. <laughs>